Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Welcome back, family. So, guys, we just wanted to update you as you see this. This is from IntelSky, uh, IAF, Israeli Air Force warplanes, low altitude over Beirut. Some people were saying this is um, cruise missiles actually being shot. Others saying it's uh, jets, you know, uh, with their afterburners on. Anyway, you look at it there has been explosions as well. And I had mentioned kind of what a, a vibe I was getting and also just, it just feels like, you know, there's the potential for something to start to explode over in the Middle East. Yeah, there is. You know, the vibe in this feels very, very dark, very low to the ground. I guess that's the best way I can explain it. Uh, would you be talking kind of reptilianish? Um, extremely. Yes, and you know, hang on there for Twitter, guys. Um, so apparently, Israel has launched strikes over at Syria, and so here you see explosions and smoke plumes. This is near Masayef, Syria. Likely, what we were just watching launch, and so Merry Christmas is you know <laughs> is what they're wishing, huh? You know, this, this is so sad, the world situation that we have. The level of, con level of consciousness on this planet is just so low uh, overall, unfortunately. And we need most definitely all new leadership and all new mentality. Because, again, of the division through, you know, the left-right paradigm, the religious paradigm, Ultimately, all this needs to change. You know, and all these beings that are doing this, they believe that they're doing the right thing, which is very, very frightening. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, history is full of people that somehow thought they were doing the right thing and committed um, just incredible atrocities, as we know. Now, you know, this is an area that has been a mess for a while, is ratcheting up in many ways. Um, here you see Russia dispatch reinforcements to Syria's Ain Issa as Turkish ha tanks are hammering the town. Um, you know, many people know about the biblical prophecies uh, of, you know, this area. And they're, they're not good. And yet we've seen, you know, warfare throughout this area for so long. So long. I mean, we could... We could look at, you know, different things that have occurred, like when you, you know, look at the destruction of the temple in 70 AD and all the Jews being taken into exile. And then, you know, look at what has happened to the Palestinian people as well. Of course, Syria is to the north of Israel and Lebanon's kind of in between those two spots. Um, it's just really, really sad. That, you know, we go back to first Iraq, you know, after, um, you know, looking at the first Gulf War, the second Gulf War, Iraq has experienced such atrocities and so much horror and loss of life. It's just, it's really sad. And then Afghanistan as well. And Syria has just been ongoing. I know. And, you know, none of these people, the common folks, none of them want this in any way. No. And, and it's those common people that are mostly suffering. And we don't really know how many people have perished just in those three countries alone. We really don't. And it creates, of course, a whole bunch of refugees that aren't welcome anywhere. And, you know, they're just trying to survive and, and you know, feed their kids, keep their kids warm. And then, of course, we have the whole lockdown situation as well. So over there, you know, you have the Syrians themselves. You have the Russians there. And also supplying them. You have Turkey in there as well. The U.S. is in there in that country as well. Uh, this is a huge recipe for disaster. And while we're, you know, looking at so many different areas, this is one that could easily explode and, and trigger the bigger war that we all feel is kind of coming. Mm -hmm. Well, they have definitely planted all the right ingredients for a huge issue to just happen here. Yeah, you know, so there's been attacks by Turkey in there. They all got kind of their own agendas going on as we see a new wave of Russian airstrikes hits militants in Syria's uh, Larakia. And 
Russia has been transporting a lot of equipment into the area. Uh, they have been. And, you know, as we go back to Project for American, A New American Century by the Neo Cons, um, you know, which was in, put together in 1997, you know, before we had 911. Mm-hmm. And it said that there would have to be seven countries taken over Syria and Iran. Yeah. They're still there. You know, and they haven't been taken over. And, you know, there there still are those forces that want that. And, you know, Russia has been beefing up what they have in Syria. And, uh, you know, it, it hasn't fallen the way that these neo-convicts want it. Mm-hmm. You're very good. I love your cryptology talk. <laughs> well, thank you. So, you know, this is just, it's a mess. It's a mess waiting to happen. It's something that could go way wrong and could end up launching a hot war between the, well, you can't say the two superpowers. Nope. Or can you? You know, would you put China now as the new superpower? And certainly if you view China and Russia as being one unit, that's most definitely a superpower. And we see here the U.S. Navy releases video of its nuclear submarine as we had that uh, tweet yesterday that caught a lot of eyes and ears. And again, you know, the only thing that's going to come of this is a whole lot of civilians and people who are completely innocent and all they want to do is live their lives and have a happy holiday. They're the ones who are going to get hurt. So it entered the Arabian Gulf, which is... (laughs) You know, the, the reason the U.S. calls it that is to tweak Iran because it's the Persian Gulf uh, is what it's recognized as. But Persia is Iran, uh, ancient Persia. Um, so, you know, again, there's so many, so many fuses that are lit right now. Pandemic and unrest fuel the biggest National Guard mobilization since World War II, in case you guys were wondering. You know, everybody's just on bated breath right now, wondering what's going to happen and, you know, what's it going to look like as we build up towards the 6th and then eventually uh, towards Inauguration Day. You know, what what's going to be going on mm-hmm. then? I mean, this buildup's huge. Uh, you're defined by a wave of protests, wildfires, and deadly pandemic brought a milestone for the National Guard, which activated more troops for duty than at any other time since World War II. Tens of thousands of guardsmen were mobilized in all 50 states, three territories, and Washington, logging more than 8.4 million duty days this year, according to the National Guard data. The bulk of the efforts has focused on the pandemic, with roles in administrating tests, distributing PPE, and in some cases, even retrieving the dead. Yeah, and, you know, it feels like as busy as they were in 2020, they're probably going to be busier in 2021. By the way, there's a fast-moving wildfire that's threatening major Marine Corps base near San Diego. Yep, Camp Pendleton. Yeah, the fire, the creek fire, uh, 300 acres, 0% contained, significant new evacuation orders for 7,000 residents on the west side of Fallbrook. Hmm, interesting, you know, a lot of train derailments, a lot of things going boom. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we've talked about the SSs yeah. that may be here yeah. from the C, C, <laughs> P. Yep. The, uh, and, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if we see some photos come out with some laser beams when it comes to these wildfires. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the question is, you know, who's, who's satellite, you know, because... Right. That's the whole other thing is the space wars, you know, that may be coming. You know, gosh knows what it's going to look like uh, up there in the skies over our heads. And I just wanted to share with you guys this, too. I thought this was interesting. Uh, The world's oldest story. Astronomers say global myths about the seven sisters may reach back 100,000 years. The Pleiades, guys. Mm -hmm. Interesting, too, because when we look at the Australian aboriginals, they have stories about them that are at least 50,000 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, But they're saying that, you know, knowledge of the Pleiades and the fact that there's a special relationship between the Pleiades and us goes back perhaps 100,000 years. 
there's so much information between us and them. They do care about us. They do love us, but we have to be open to receiving their help. It's interesting because there's stories about a lost um, Pleiadid, Pleiadid, I guess you would say, uh, which are found in Europe, Africa, Asia, Indonesia, the Americas, as well as Aboriginal Australian cultures. Many cultures regard the cluster as having seven stars, but acknowledge only six are normally visible, and then have a story to explain why the seventh is invisible. How come the Australian Aboriginal stories are so similar to the Greek ones? Anthropologists used to think the Europeans might have brought the Greek story to Australia. Yeah, sure, sure. Where it was adapted by Aboriginal people for their own purposes. But the Aboriginal stories seem to be much, much older than European contact, of course. And there was little contact between most Abor Australian Aboriginal cultures and the rest of the world for at least 50,000 years. So why did they share the same stories? Isn't that fascinating? You know, is it left over from a global culture? You know, as we've talked about Atlantis being a global culture, how about Lemuria as well, which is older than Atlantis? Well, I do believe all of these entities are tied together. I keep wanting to get like a big, big whiteboard so I could draw it out because I can feel it in my body, how they're connected, but I can't quite see it. Interesting. And, and one of the reasons why is that when you go back 100,000 years, two of the stars were not perfectly lined up. So we could equate this to the grand conjunction that we just saw and, you know, how close Saturn and Jupiter were. Now, these two stars are lined up so that they appear to be one. But back then, 100,000 years ago, they were distinguishable as two. So that's why they think that this goes back that far. And as we said, the Pleiades are very, very special because, you know, hey, we got cousins from there. Right, we do. We do have a lot more relation there than we understand. And I, I feel this is a little more drip disclosure. I, it feels so good to me. I like it. Well, that's good. And I, I wanted to share with um, everyone before we go, um, I had asked you about Syria because I'm getting a very, very bad feeling about this. Like this could be one of the triggers. And by the way, um, a whole bunch of Russian tanks were seen in Libya as well. Um, so that's another potential spot. But you said the guide said about Syria? Well, it's more the Federation. They said that they're in trouble. And um, the tone and with how they said it was very bad. And as far as trouble, meaning like it's either now, like as we speak, or it's something coming in the extremely near future. So, you know, let's pr pray for all the people over there. May there actually be peace upon earth, you know, at this time of the holy days, the holidays. May mankind rise up and overthrow the darkness that's enshrouded it and close off its heart. And may we truly cultivate that, like Christ consciousness or Krishna consciousness, you know, or just simply that compassion, no matter what we labels we want to put on it, it comes down to compassion, tolerance, acceptance, love, and forgiveness. Yes, let's, let's put on that vibration and let's send it over to them because they're going to need it and they deserve it. Thank you guys for your support on Ko-Fi and Patreon. I hope you guys are having a blessed season. God bless and namaste. Namaste.